Hello, welcome and welcome back. I'm Aidan Swan and this is Ink for Artists in which I test inks from the point of view of an artist. Today we're working with Sailor Shikiori and the colour is Sakura Mori. Now I've had a bit of a gap in my ink collection for pinks which considering I'm going to be doing a couple of botanicals soon is something I needed to rectify and I fell absolutely head over heels in love with this perfect protea pink. Now, inside the beautiful, minimal, very Japanese-style packaging is your bottle, and the colour inside just glows. It's absolutely spectacular. And along with that, you get a colour chart. Now, it was a tough call. I went back a couple of times because I struggled to choose between the Sakura Mori and the Yozakura. And in the end, I decided on the Sakura Mori purely because I have a few pink-based purples and figured that I could always purple it down if needed, but I need a proper pink. So let's start. As per tradition, we're going to do wet on wet and wet on dry testing. Our first thing is to lay down the ink that we need for the wet on dry and to see how the ink works at full concentration. At first glance, it seems to me to be a very lightly pigmented ink, a very pale, soft pink, not nearly as saturated as many of the other inks that I work with. I'm now laying down water for our wet on wet. As always, I'm working with a Winsor Newton Series 7 and this is a size 2. Oh, look at that pull. It's very, very liquid and very light. So the second it touches that water, it just pulls all the way through. I'm getting very much guava and pomegranate vibes from it, but it's an absolutely beautiful, very florid, very fresh pink. Let's add a little bit more and see what happens. And a bit more water just to see how it reacts. It's absolutely lovely. You see, the second I draw it out, it just pulls through and evens out the shade. Let's see what happens when we bruise it back. There's a bit of a mauve undertone to it, which is quite surprising, considering that for the rest, there's actually a touch of 
toffee in there and a little bit of gold. Now that our samples are fully dry, you can see that it actually gets more intense as it dries, which is very surprising from an ink of this type. You can also see all of those toffee and gold tones coming through, as well as those very pale guava shades. Here is our chromatography, which you can see immediately how wet it is, that it just pulled all the way through the blotting paper, right to the end, which hasn't happened with any inks we've tried before it. But you can also see all of those pastel pale peachy pinks and mauves and toffee and gold all the way through to this incredible rich cerise, which is obviously the base. Now let's try our wet on dry. This ink doesn't re-wet nearly as much as many of the other inks I work with, but you still do get a good amount of pigment off of it with re-wetting. It is a staining ink, so that is something to be aware of, that you cannot just re-wet it and then pick it all back up. But there's enough pigment there to work with and to blend. So it is still a beautiful ink for painters. Now let's add a bit of water to our other sample and see how much we can pick up. Just a little bit. You get a bit of pale pink staining there, but not very much. You can get a few good effects working that way though and you do get enough pigment off it to rework with the super pale pinks elsewhere if you need to. This ink may not seem as interesting as many of the more elaborate inks with their shimmers and sheens and bizarre undertones, but for me its beauty is in its subtlety. You get that little bit of toffee, the little bit of mauve. It's the perfect ink for botanical illustrations, and it's a perfect spring ink. Now, our painting today is obviously a protea. That is what I got this ink for. However, I will be doing this painting in two parts. I'll be finishing it in the next video. I decided that since in the Northern Hemisphere it's autumn and it's Halloween and it's pumpkin season, but here in the Southern Hemisphere it's spring, so I thought I'd do the best of both worlds. and with a bit of help from Aubrey, of course. I use quite a few inks in this painting, so I will list them in the write-up at the bottom. I absolutely love proteas. They're probably my favorite overall flower species, and I could fill your head with interesting things about proteas, but I'm not going to because I've already done that. So after this video, I recommend that you go and watch my Ace of Wands video and learn about not only that tarot card, but also the Protea family and the Cape Floral Kingdom. So I will link that at the end of this video.
As always, all the thanks to my amazing patrons. You guys make my world go round. If you would like to help support not only this channel, but my tarot and all the other work that I do, and to get sneak peeks and behind the scenes and heads up on everything as it happens, I will link my Patreon below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. I always love making these videos. And I would love to hear what you have to say about this ink. Have you used it? Do you want to use it? Drop me a comment. As I said previously, this little painting is no, by no means finished. So yes, it's a little bit messy. There's a bit of um, staining on the paper. Don't worry about that. We'll fix it next time. And I'm excited to show you our beautiful pumpkin orange that we are doing in the next video. I will see you next time.